Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so we're getting into uh, what I think is a very exciting couple of talks here. Um, that we're obviously I'm talking about the API, and then after that we have a masterclass getting in hands-on action with the API. So this is uh, one of the more nerdy sessions you can probably do while you're here at the conference, and a little bit ambitious right after lunch because I'm a bit ready for a nap after all that food myself. Um, but I do think there's a lot of exciting work that's happening with the API. There's a lot of potential for what you're able to do with it. And so I think it'll be great for us to be able to talk through that today. Uh, so today I'm talking about connecting the dots, use cases and design principles when using the pure API. Oh, has the HDMI cable got too unplugged? Okay, um, so first off to introduce myself, I'm Jeremy Gibson. I am have recently changed roles. Um, I've been with Elsevier a couple of years. Before that, I was at Queensland University of Technology, where I was working to implement a number of systems, Pure being one of those. So I have a lot of hands-on experience working with Pure, and like I can see in many of the people who are here in this session, um, you know, I had the experience of working out how to push Pure to the limit to be able to achieve what we needed to do, how to leverage the things that were in the system to get that out. I've been working as an implementation manager for the last two years, but I've recently switched over to an integration delivery manager as part of integration delivery services, which I'll talk about a bit more at the end of my talk. So today, um, we're going to talk through the Pure API, give a bit of an introduction to it. Um, we'll also, a key part that I want to focus on is talking about the differences between the API and XML sync. So for a lot of you, and these same principles apply in many ways to the database sync. So you will have seen in the session where Henrik was talking before about the transitions that are going to happen, the deprecation of database sync. For a lot of the established pure clients, that's what you've been using and need to look at changing your integrations. It's not just a case of switching to a new technology and you know building your thing with it. These are fundamentally different. There are a lot of great things that you can achieve out of this, but you need to think about them differently. So I really want to touch on these points today to give you that information um, that even if you're not the most technical person, that you can take, um, you know, get a recording of this session, take this information back to your IT teams to be able to talk about this as you look at how you can adjust your integrations to better leverage this moving forward. And I've got a couple of practical use cases, some of which are very simple and a lot of universities can implement in a very modularized way that gives you a chance to experiment with the API. So one that I think a lot of you should be able to pick up very easily. Okay, so first off, the Pure API. So previously, this has been the way of the world with Pure in terms of how you could get data um, systematically in or out of Pure, you had the bulk import, or the synchronization, both of which used XML in the same sort of format to bring it in. Um, and you know, there's obviously other import sources, manual entry, but talking about the sort of systemized ways available to you to bring your own data in. And then in terms of getting data out, we had the web service and the reporting module. So you had different formats for how you create the data to put it into Pure, and a different format for how you get it out of Pure at the end of it. What we have now is the Pure API uses the same structure for both creating records and reading records out of it. So this is actually quite a big step and offers a lot of opportunities in terms of how you're constructing data, being able to read it, being able to potentially move things between environments, that sort of thing that hasn't been there previously. With the, so many of you will have used the web service already, but the Pure API has a number of new features that come with it. Obviously the major one that everyone is excited about is the capacity to write data into Pure. But as part of this, the team has also been trying to build it more 
um, with a lot more fine-grained controls as part of it. So you have your access definitions where you're able to set up which particular fields can be accessed, whether those can be written to or just read. Um, and you can define multiple access definitions and control which endpoints people have access to. So just as an example up here, I've created an API key where the person has access to read only on organization of name and type, but they're able to read and write to the person record to add name and, rec and ORCID. So those are the only fields, if they do a get call, that they see, and those are the only fields, the only fields that they can change are the name and ORCID. So this can allow you to do very detailed control, whereas previously the web service is sort of these six endpoints is what they have access to, and a lot of people end up just using admin and making it access to everything. I'd strongly encourage you to experiment with this and adjust it, and to create many keys for each of the different purposes you have. The reasons for that I'll touch on a bit later, but from a security perspective and making sure that your integrations are doing exactly what they should be doing, um, plays into this. That you want to make sure you're not updating data you shouldn't be touching. Also, these, uh, these API keys are tied to a user, so you have the same access restrictions that applies to that user. And the access definitions also allow you more fine-grained filtering of what content is displayed, how you handle confidential and other things that previously you were sort of doing for a full version of the API, if you've ever dug into the, um, you know, the detailed settings in that area. You can now do this individually so that each different key can see records differently. We also, um, the content type coverage that's coming, I'm sure you're all keeping an eye on this. Part of the challenge of putting these slides out, uh, you know, needing to submit them a number of weeks ago is that they're already out of date. Oh no, they're not out of date, it's just some things have gone green since I last did this because 528 has been released. So we now have data sets and equipment and you can see that we're actually getting a lot of the content types coming in there. And I know that this is a real priority of the team is to get those rest of those content types so that we're able to um, uh, deprecate the web service as it exists presently. So with this in mind, I've got an audience poll, which hopefully you've figured out how to do now. We probably could have just done as a show of hands in this room. Um, but if you open up the app and go to it, um, the question is, is your institution currently tracking research with data? Why and how? And then answer the questions that come up. Hang on. Is that my question? No, yeah, no, there's a completely, I was going, that's not my question. I don't recognize that. This is my question, so this is the right one. Um, but so the Pure API, how are you using? Okay, and so what I was expecting was that we would see a lot of people who've dabbled, so that's not surprising. The ad hoc data updates is a really good use case that I'm glad that a lot of people are using it for that purpose because there is a lot of power in that that is new functionality that hasn't been used. And I'm genuinely surprised to see that many people having integrations built around it. I was expecting that to be an incredibly low number. Um, but it shows that we've got a good spread of people. Most of you have played around with it in some way. So I don't need to go from the ground up, but I do think that these design principles, and I'm curious when we get to questions, hearing the same sort of challenges you've had about thinking these things for the ones who have built integrations. Okay, so talking about API versus XML sync. So there's a number of key differences, and there is actually a wiki page that I've written about this in the client space, which will soon be moving over to Help Juice, that I would recommend for you to look at if you haven't, um, as a resource to be able to share with your teams internally, because it's very important as you start to make this decision. So first off, JSON CRUD API is industry standard practice. Most people who have done any web development and integrations will know how to deal with that, have experience with it. XML is a bit dated now. The pure XML is very specific to pure and the way that it operates is very specific. Um, so it's, not, it's a skill that people need to learn if they're wanting to work with it. Whereas the JSON API, people should be able to pick up the Swagger page and know what they're doing with it a lot more naturally. So it really depends on the skill sets of people that you've got supporting Pure. And something that I really want to note is um, this point here about the XML sync gives you a lot of training wheel features, is how I like to think of them. So this is going that you can go, oh, if I've got an external organization, I'll just put in the name of it and Pure will try to match it to it. And if it exists, it will create it. If not, um, uh, you know, if it matches to one, it will use it. If not, it will create a new record. The difference with the API is it doesn't give you those things. 
Um, you need to make sure that the external organization you're referencing exists before you reference it in the person object you're creating. So this gives you a lot more fine-grained control. The challenge of when you've used the XML sync is that it only gives you a couple of fields you can put in there, so you often end up with a lot of uh, records that might not be fully populated when they're created, or information that's a bit junk in there because you haven't had the full detail or it hasn't quite matched and so it's created a duplicate. But the API will expect a lot more of you. There's a lot more work that needs to be done with it. It's not going to hold your hand on the way through as much, but there is a lot more power that you get out of it as a result. <laughs> now, in terms of the scope, for those of you who are used to XML or database view synchronizations, Pure really, the use case for it is Pure expects a full set of current records each time. There is some functionality recently released around the resumption token that sort of helps uh, offer some variation, but for the most part, it's all of your current staff need to be in there, all of your current organizations, et cetera. And that's how Pure is expecting the data to be. The API does an individual record per, per call. So that means that it can process a set of records by iterating through them. It can do a single record. Um, you can deal with just what's changed in the last 24 hours. So you can do your deltas that you're working with instead. And so you're able to adjust what you're actually looking at a lot more there. As a result of this, we'd normally have the XML sync suggested that you're running it on a nightly basis. So every night, it will update with your data and you have it in there. That normally is acceptable for these things, but increasingly, I'm sure all of you have dealt with situations where you're wanting that person who's a new professor who started and is in the HR system but hasn't come in pure yet to be in there. The API actually allows you to have real-time integrations. Um, so you can have that data instantly coming across, going into other systems being updated as you need it. Now, a major gap that we have had, and probably one that has made people hesitant about whether to switch to the APIs, has been this one about the locking records. So if you've got used to the XML or database synchronizations, you're used to being able to control which fields are editable, which fields aren't. The API has been updated in 527 for a workaround for this. It's not a long-term solution. It will be added to the API later. But as Henrik was saying in the roadmap yesterday, that's the phase two once all the content types are there. So presently that's sort of projected later next year. But you can actually start to use this to lock the records in the way that you're used to using the XML sync. There is a bit of extra work you need to do and there's a couple of caveats in it. But for your use cases, if this, if this is the reason you've been holding off going down this path, it may be something that you should revisit now and look into in more detail. Relation lists. Okay, so this is a really important one to understand and there's a couple of pieces in here. So the XML sync allows you to lock your relation list and go, you know, what is coming from our source system is controlled there. So think about your IDs that you have on a person. You're going, you've got your staff ID, your ORCID ID, or your, well, not ORCID ID in that particular case, but your Scopus ID going, these are the ones that we have in there that are controlled. Users can't edit those, we're locking them. 10 minutes, okay. So with that, you then can't add new records, you can't edit what's in there, you're saying it's locked and can't be edited. If you choose to not lock it, then users can come in and add new data in there, but you can never control that via the XML sync. So it means that if a user comes in and adds a bunch of IDs, Pew is going to treat those separately from the sync that you've been running, and so those will continue to exist. You can't modify those. The API, it can access everything, and so it means that you're able to remove and clean up those IDs if people have created data they shouldn't, where you couldn't previously. But this also comes with a really big caveat, that whenever you use the API and you're calling it on a list of records, you need to let Pure know that you're meaning to keep those records there. So what that means at a technical level in the JSON is that you at least need to have the Pure ID of each of those affiliations or the IDs that you have in there so that they are maintained within Pure. Otherwise, Pure thinks because you haven't sent it, you don't want it there, and so we'll delete it. So this is something to just be wary of. I'm not sure if this makes... <laughs> For some of you, it'll make obvious sense because you've dealt with it. If not, come and talk to me afterwards. Happy to have some questions. I'm also planning to float around in the next session to support. So if there's anything from that that you want to ask, you can do that then. But this is just one. And there's more detail online with some examples about it that I'd refer you to. But it's just to be wary because there is potential with the API to delete records that you're not meaning to. So you do need to be very careful there. 
flexibility. And so this is the major thing that the API um, brings to the table. So XML sync really had a single job for you. It's designed so that you have your source of truths data in another system that comes into Pure and is now stored in there so that you have your HR records coming across. Normally it only updates records that controls. And so with the exception of um, some award management, things that you can do. So really you're talking about the source system, it appears in Pure and that's what it's dealing with. The API can update any record, can obviously create new records. It can update individual fields on records. So this allows you to have multiple sources that might be bringing data into Pure. This allows you to target specific fields. So you might have a registry that has a particular type of, uh, you know, if your ORCID is registered somewhere else and managed by the library, you could have an integration that's just adding those ORCID IDs to person records, but you don't need to be synchronizing all of the person data across. And then maturity. So obviously API is under development. XML sync has been there for a very long time, used by many customers around the world. So we do say that the API is stable, tested and ready to be used for integrations but there is ongoing development work happening and that does sometimes mean there are breaking changes introduced. Those are clearly indicated in the release notes if that happens, but you do need to be aware, um, depending on the risk appetite of your university, that there are some caveats there. And lastly, broader applications. There's many ways that you can use the API that you can't use the XML sync. You can do data enrichment with it, adding new information to records. You can do ad hoc data integrity or cleaning tasks with it. You can do rapid targeted integrations and do more refined organizational unit control because you give access to an API key only for a particular organizational unit. So there's lots of ways that you can use it. And so now I actually want to touch on a couple of those. So the example that I say most universities can pick up is about user management. So presently user sync only creates users, doesn't assign roles. You're normally doing it just to add your personal users connected to the academic profiles into the system. The Pure API allows you to create users and add and modify roles. So partly this makes security really important. With your web service, if you had the API key and it got out somewhere, then people could access your data in the system. If you have an API key to Pure and it's not properly secured, then you could go in and create, somebody could go in and create a super administrator who can come in and delete records, modify them, do whatever they want in the system. So you do need to be careful in how you use this because it gives a lot of power that hasn't been there previously. But as an example, most universities will have some sort of ticketing system. Southampton was talking about using ServiceNow in the last session um, to be able to um, manage requests. So if you have something like that, that often has a simple degree of workflow behind it that you can actually control. So for your users, imagine that you have a person coming in and you may even have forms like this already, but then a manual process at the last step. So somebody comes in, says, I want access to Pure. I need to have this particular role in this organizational unit. It can then go off, get approvals from the various people that it needs to have approval by. And then presently, you may just do the manual step of adding it in Pure. But you could actually have, at the end of this, there's an API call that goes and adds that, uh, creates that user record in Pure, adds the role that's been approved to it. All of this is then logged in your system. You have a clear approval history of when it is done, how long it is supposed to be there for. And this doesn't need to touch on any of your existing integrations um, going into other spaces. So this is an example I like to give of something that could be very simple as an exploratory project for you and mean that then your user management is much more embedded into a, a more enterprise level system. Similarly, there's a lot of organization uh, groups doing cleanup where you can get doing cleanup. We've got tools in Pure, but if you're doing large scale, it is very difficult. So I know a lot of universities you might be doing something where you could run a report out of Pure, clean it in Excel, and go, I want to change these name fields, these re um, external organizations we want to merge together. And then you can actually update via the API. I've had examples when I was at QUT where I had a macro in Excel that was just behind the scenes and would call the API based on what data you had in the columns in there. So you could go, here's the organizational UID, here's the three fields that need to be updated, and you just do a call and it changes that data. So there are some of these things that can be done very easily now. It needs a little bit of technical skill, but there are tools that can make that a lot easier. I'd suggest having a look at Postman, Insomnia as tools that you can leverage um, to be able to do this. And so I'm gonna skip over demo, but if any of you are interested 
come grab me later. I can show you some of these examples on my laptop to show you the sort of things that can be achieved here. Finally, talking about integration delivery services. So this is the new role I'm involved in. And so this is part of a team where we work, um, we're working heavily with pure customers to be able to give you new, um, to offer custom built services to be able to better support your pure system. So that often means we're talking about integrations. We're also looking at ways that we're able to leverage uh, data analytics. You may have seen some presentations on equipment monitor throughout the conference where we're trying to find equipment that you have um, in your pure system, matching it against uh, your research outputs and being able to push back those linkages to go these research outputs have been used on these equipment pieces. So if what I've said here seems interesting to you, but also daunting, come have a chat to me because we may be able to work with you <laughs> Um, to be able to offer some of the functionality that we're seeing here without you needing to dev devote the internal IT resources to it. And so that's what I wanted to talk to you about today, so thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. We, we might have uh, answer, time for a question or two if anybody wants to ask Jeremy anything. Hi, uh, Chris from Lancaster. Um, we're currently using the database things and we're looking at migrating things across and over. Um, one of the benefits from the database things that we have is it will come up with the errors and tell us what's wrong with some things. Um, yeah. What Does the API key help with that? So that that is, I believe I've got that in the more detailed version of it, didn't cover here, is that part of it, taking away the training wheels means that you need to do your own error logging. So the API will go, we can't create this record because there's missing data or this is invalid or this organizational unit doesn't exist, but there's not a nice log of those kept in pure. Again, that brings flexibility. So when I was at Queensland University of Technology, we wanted to be able to, rather than using the uh, job logs, uh, we wanted to be able to get the data into Splunk where the university managed um, any issues that came up in integrations, but it was buried away in pure. Using the API, you get access to that and can store it in those places. But again, it's a matter of the maturity that you have in place for handling those things, and you do need to build some error handling of whatever you, you do to use the APIs. Oh. Yep. Running. No, sorry. Can I share just one use case that I couldn't make with the um, APIs because they're quite limited and you cannot reach anything what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So use cases like this, simple. You want to send an email whenever a user changes or uploads some, something in there. Yeah. Simple use case. Uh, email is in a user table and everything else is in persons. I couldn't join those two anyhow for what I have APIs. So I had to go back end and dig into the da database and uh, I actually build it from the back back end and build okay. my thing on, on top of that. But I would love not to do that. Yeah, I, I would love to use uh, APIs and what is missing, I need to always check if that is changed. So I need that feedback. Yeah, you know. and, and certainly, yeah, I, you know, I'm not part of the development team on this, so I won't speak too closely to it, but I know that uh, it's certainly on the roadmap to have better search functionality and ways to get it out. On your specific case, I do believe you can get the user ID off the person object. So if you've got the person, you can find the user. I couldn't, ID. yeah. If it was not, uh, I tried to pick it up and then pick up uh, okay. email, it just didn't work any, any, anyhow. Okay. Yeah, and there's certainly what we're seeing is the fine tuning of these things, more functionality coming, more filtering, the locking, uh, you know, the capacity to do searches and it um, is stuff that's on the way. Okay. Only that because the logging can be something that will actually follow you. Yeah. Something is you are, you are using. Yeah. Look. Uh, amen to that. Uh, you hear that, Henrik? <laughs> Just one final short question. This very short. What's the sunset date for the XML sync? So there is no sunset date for the XML sync presently. There is no declared intention to um, move away from it. I am not part of the product team, so I can't speak to that. But I'm seeing. That's right, Henrik. We haven't said like we have. Yeah, we intend to keep it. 